Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello everybody, welcome to Big Mike's Movie Reviews. I hope you guys like this lighting in my room. I think this is the mood. It's bright, but it's also shadowy at the same time. And I want to address the elephant in the room. Sorry about the computer fan, it's on the fritz, it's busy scanning something. We're gonna make it do what it do, so enough of that. So last night on January 12th, I caught the early glimpse screening of the film Plane with Gerard Butler and Mike Coulter, which opens today, Friday the 13th. But the prior Tuesday, I went and had my double features, and I saw the first film, which was called A Man Called Otto, and the second one was called Women Talking. But we're going to talk about this very first one called A Man Called Otto. This movie is based off of the novel as well as the Swedish film called A Man Called Ove. And this film, it's called A Man Called Otto. This was directed by Mark Forster, who's well known for kind of spinning the roulette wheel when it comes to his films. He did that thriller sleeper film back in 2004 called Stay, which had Bob Hoskins and Naomi Watts and Ewan McGregor. Then in 2005, he did the fantasy family film called Leaving Neverland with Johnny Depp. And to a lot of people's surprise, he did the sequel to Casino Royale 2008 James Bond film called Quantum of Solace, which still to this day is the shortest James Bond film and kind of gets a bad rap, but I don't think it's as bad as it's you know been given credit for. So my point is, Mark Forster really does really really does a lot of different stuff you know you, you you know you can't really put him in a box you give him something he's gonna do it and I gotta be honest <clears throat> I wasn't too excited to see this movie it looked from the trailers like a kind of a typical warm-hearted formulaic family movie with a grouchy old man who thinks he's right about everything and of course he learns to be a good person by the end of the movie it's kind of like that, but this movie takes a lot of dark, serious turns, and that's where the movie shines. In this film, you have a man named Otto, who is portrayed by Tom Hanks, and he is someone right from the opening of the film who, it's crazy because he reminds me of myself a lot of ways, he expects everything to be perfect. He is a perfectionist in every sense of the word. For example, in the opening of the film, he purchases some rope, and the person at the register charges him for six feet of rope because that's the only way the computer allows him to do it, but he only bought five feet of rope, and that's all he needed. Even though he got charged for six feet, he only bought five, so he thinks he should be entitled to the five feet. Again, I can understand where he's coming from. It's kind of like, you know, when you go to buy a burger <clears throat> at McDonald's, it comes with typically the meat patty, the bun, ketchup, mustard, pickles, and onions. Those are, you know, six things right there. You figure if you want to remove the pickles and the onions and the, you know, the ketchup and the mustard and you want to substitute it, you kind of think you should be paying maybe the same price. Well, you don't because that's just not how it is. And he's someone who doesn't like things how the way they are. He's very, very strict about how things are in his neighborhood where people park with the way people walk their dogs, everything. It's all in the trailer. You can see it. It's linked down below. And when this new family is moving in across the street from him, he really does get agitated at the fact that they're not following his rules because apparently he thinks he's God. But the thing about Otto is there's a lot underneath the surface. He's someone who harbors a lot of guilt, a lot of regret. And unfortunately, and this is going to be a little spoilery here, and this is where the movie takes a very serious dark turn unfortunately he is and this is why he bought the rope he is trying to kill himself he absolutely can't take it anymore and even after people try to show him love and compassion 
he still tries to follow through with it. There's multiple scenarios where he attempts to kill himself. And what makes the movie very hard with its PG-13 rating and very far removed from the stereotypical grumpy old man family kind of warm-hearted feel is it does relish in the suicide scenes. He does, in fact, knock the table over that he's on and he does hang himself. And he does it right after eating a delicious meal that his neighbor prepared for him. And, of course, the attempt fails. And there's other moments where, again, he's constantly trying to do it. It can be a bit jarring. And I must warn you, if you are someone who is thinking about suicide or, you know, thinking it doesn't get better, it does. It really does. I will confess personally, I am what you would call a suicide survivor and... You know, when you really get to that point and you realize there's no turning back, that's kind of what stopped me because it's one of those things where it's a decision more often than not that's made out of emotion. And once you start it, you really can't walk back away from it. And obviously the universe is telling Otto, in the film at least, he's got a lot more to do. Even though he's trying to get rid of himself and thinks he's meaningless and yet also thinks he's right there's still more for him to do and that's where the film shines and it also shines even brighter with marina trevino who plays his neighbor marisol she is a perfect yang to his yin and they get to in the in a typical formulaic way they get to unravel things and you know she gets to realize why Otto is the way he is and it's a really intriguing film for that matter and it does have a very touching ending but be warned. I know, like I said a million times now, just because the trailer makes the movie look like it's a warm-hearted, happy family affair with him talking to the two little girls in the backseat of the car and seeing the kitty cat trying to pop its head out of a box and him petting the cat and waving, that's, no, the, the trailer definitely tries to sell this like it's a warm-hearted family movie. It is not. This is, again, it's a 50-50 balance. It's got a little bit of that, but it's also got very, very serious stuff. So, Take heed when you go see the film. But other than that, I found this movie to be very enjoyable. It was very delightful. The audience really loved it. It actually does have quite a few laughs. For example, after Otto's failed hanging attempt and he looks on the ground, he sees a bunch of newspapers and he's like, oh, there's a sale. Like, you know, it's it's kind of funny. The movie's very much a salt and sugar kind of a combination. And it's something you don't really see a lot of these days. And the film really shines for that. And it is interesting that this is the second time this year, and I say this year because this movie came out right around Christmas of 2022. It's the second time this year we've seen Tom Hanks play a villainous-like role. Because obviously he portrayed a villain in the real-life persona of Colonel Tom Parker in the Elvis movie that recently came out. So it's interesting to see this different turn from Tom Hanks. But either way, good stuff as always. I really enjoyed his role. I also enjoyed seeing his son, Truman Hanks, play a younger version of him in flashbacks. It's really, really uh, refreshing to see that. But overall, the movie has a lot of heart, a lot of soul, good chemistry from everybody involved. I do recommend seeing it, but just take heed again. It's going to have very strong roller coaster like, you know, dips with warm heartedness and serious, serious subject matter, concluding death. So be warned. But with that being said, I'm going to give my grade for A Man Called Otto. I'm going to give it a solid B. It is a good film. I really liked what I saw. It does run a little long, but that's okay because I didn't find myself being bored by it. But I found myself enjoying it, and Mark Forrester continues to prove he is a force to be reckoned with in the directing world. And with that, go check it out. It's in theaters right now. And be sure to look forward to my next review, Women Talking with Rooney Mara and Claire Foy. So you guys take care, be well, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the movies. Take care now. Bye.